Hello friends, welcome to my channel Grammarian Bhai and today let's solve Julius Caesar Act 4 Scene 1 of Class 10 from Morning Star Workbook and if you have not yet subscribed my channel please subscribe it. So let's begin. So first here is the multiple choice question. So the first one the raging passion of the mob in the earlier scene is replaced by which of the following in this scene? So here option B is correct. Cold-hearted ruthlessness of the anarchists. Second, who among the following is not a part of the second triumvirate? So here option B is correct. Number three, what does the list that Antony and Octavius are reading together contain. So here option C is correct. The names of the people to be executed. Number four, your brother too must die, whose brother is referred to. So here option B is correct, Lepidus. On what condition does Lepidus agree that his brothers should be executed? So here option A is correct. Mark Antony's sister's son should also be executed. Next, number six, what does Antony ask Lepidus to do? So here option D is correct, to get Caesar's will from his house. Number seven, what does Antony intend to do after getting Caesar's will? Here option C is correct, cut down the amount of money bequeathed by Caesar. Number eight, to whom does Antony refer to as unmeritable man? So here option A is correct, Lepidus. Next, number nine, according to Antony, what is this unmeritable man fit for? So here option B is correct, to do odd jobs. Number 10, to whom does Antony compare Lepidus in this scene? So here option B is correct, a donkey who carries a lord of gold. Number 11, which of the following adjectives is not used by Mark Antony for Lepidus? So here option A, store of provender. Number 12, what does Octavius say about Lepidus in this scene? So here option C is correct. He is a good soldier. Number 13, which of the following is hinted in this scene? So here option A is correct. Tensions within the second triumvirate. Next, which characteristic trait of Mark Antony is highlighted in this scene? So here option B is correct, ruthless and hypocritical. Number 15, Mark Antony's dismissal of Lepidus reflect which of the following traits of the personality. So here option D is correct, both B and C. Next, we will discuss contextual questions. So you, you go through by the extract. Let me discuss the question and answers. So the first one. What is meant by their names are picked? Why are these names picked? What does this show regarding the custom of Elizabethan times? So the answer will be, it meant that the conspirators' names are picked, those who killed Caesar. So it was an official list of the names of the people to be executed for their support of Brutus. These men would lose their lives and their properties would be taken away by the government. According to Elizabethan times, it was the custom for the people to be punished or killed and their properties were taken away by the government if they were found guilty. Second question, what was Antony's reply to the condition put forward by Lepidus? What does Antony ask Lepidus to do then? Why? So the answer will be, Lepidus said that Antony's nephew, Publius, also should be killed. So Antony agreed to the condition put forward by Lepidus that Publius would be killed. Then Antony told Lepidus to go to Caesar's house and bring the will the written document by Caesar here so that they would settle how to reduce some of the expenditures in legacies left by 
seizure for the Roman public. Next, number three, what opinion does Antony hold of Lepidus? What does he propose to do with him after making use of him? So the answer will be, Antony looks down upon Lepidus and considers him useless. He feels he is only fit to run errands and not to be included as a partner in the government of Rome. Antony later insults and compares Lepidus to an ass who carries heavy loads and unloads them as directed. He also compares him to his horse that runs in the direction he was commanded to go. He proposes that he must be discarded after making use of him. Antony does not want to share Roman world or wealth with Lepidus as he is not worthy of becoming their partner in controlling Rome. Next, number four. Why did Antony send Lepidus to Caesar's house? Which characteristic trait of Antony is revealed here? So the answer will be, Antony sent Lepidus to Caesar's house to get the will. He did not send Octavius, but sent Lepidus, because he considered Lepidus as a useless man and only is meant to serve them. Greedy, cunning, unscrupulous and selfish nature of Antony is revealed here. He wants to rule over Rome and take a major portion of its wealth for himself left by Caesar. Number 5. State briefly the comparison hinted between Brutus and Antony in this scene. So the answer will be, Antony appears as a ruthless and cunning dictator who wants to gain control of the maximum power in governing Rome. He looks down upon the people like Lepidus who had helped him a lot. He is selfish and intolerant, ready to discard friends once they have served his purpose. He sacrifices the principles and friendship for his personal gain, whereas Brutus appears to be an honorable man who only has the sole motive to save Rome and its people from the tyranny of Caesar. So he only insists to kill Caesar and no any other persons for the betterment of Rome. He does not look down upon anyone. He has no greedy for power and wealth like Antony. Second extract, and the first question of second extract is, where are the three persons? What they have formed? Who shall not live? So the answer will be, the three persons are in a house in Rome. They have formed to discuss the list of prescriptions. The people whose names are in the list must die because they are found guilty for supporting Brutus for murdering Caesar. Second question. On a previous occasion, Antony has referred to Caesar's will when talking to a Roman citizen. Show the contrast be between that reference and this. So the answer will be, Antony on a previous occasion had referred to Caesar's will stating to the Roman citizens that Caesar had left 75 drachmas to each individual. He had also left his private roads, groups of trees, newly planted orchards on the bank of the river Tiber and common pleasure ground. These were bequeathed to the public as his heirs and to their heirs forever. Antony now wants to reduce the legacy left to commoners by Caesar. He wants to keep the major portion of Caesar's wealth himself. Earlier he spoke for the benefit of every Romans, but now he is selfish, greedy and unscrupulous. Third question, the meaning of determine and charge. What trait of Antony's character is shown 
in lines 3 and 4 of the given extract. So the answer will be determine means to decide or to settle the will of seizure. Charge means expenditures to reduce the legacy left by seizure for the Romans. Antony is power hungry and is ready to sacrifice all principles and friendship to achieve his aims. He is cold and ruthless fellow. Number four, what does Octavius say in defense of Lepidus to Antony? So the answer will be Octavius says in defense of Lepidus to Antony that Lepidus was a good military general and Caesar's friend. He had helped in making in taking control of Rome, but later both Octavius and Antony planned to disregard him as unfit to be a partner with them in government of the Roman world. Last question number five. State the three things that Antony says about Lepidus after his departure. What does it show about Antony's character? So the answer will be the three things that Antony says about Lepidus after his departure are first, Lepidus is a feeble man of no merits. Second, he is only fit to be an errant. Third, he looks down upon him and regards him like donkey and horse, meant to be used for service. It shows that he is selfish, uses other people to achieve his aims. He is ruthless and cunning, ready to barter away even lives in his quest to become the ruler of Rome. He looks down upon his fellow men who helped him to achieve his goals. And if you think the video is helpful to you, please subscribe the channel and like the video.